Hello, Sunshines, and welcome to the Valiant Day Plays MMM Murder Most Misfortunate by Foolish Mortals. This game was part of Itchio's Bundle for Ukraine. A gruesome murder interrupts an evening party at a secluded mansion, and you are the prime suspect. Explore the mansion, search for clues, and interrogate the other guest as you strive to unmask the killer in this open ended mystery. Warning this video contains strong language and imagery that some may find disturbing. Discretion is advised. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Let's see, we should have a candle, right? Okay, so we have a candle. Can we go back to the breaker room? Or do we act actively need a flashlight. Thanks to my game. I should be able to find the light switch. Ah, there we go. With only a little effort, I found my way down to the basement of the old house. Although our little adventure with the lighting had seemed natural enough at the time, given the condition of the house, the prince's murder had colored all of the evening's happenings with a more sinister shape. No. Perhaps examining the house's electrical panel for myself would shed some light on the mystery. Okay. I'm gonna up the voice volume a little bit. It's a little quiet. Examine room. That must be the breaker panel. Let's take a closer look. Shall we? I don't know much about this sort of thing, but it looks to me that all the switches are on, except for one. Hmm. Well, fun as it would be to make the little girl faint again, I probably shouldn't touch them for now. Mm hmm. The wiring is old, but it looks to me like it should all work. It's a bit of a mess, though. Hard to tell just what goes where. Yeah. Hello. What have we here? It's an electrical timer. Oh. <laughs> I once used one of these in the school breaker room to shut off the lights during my high school exams. I see. You can use it to flip a breaker switch at a predetermined time. The question is? Just what is it doing here? I'm starting to think our little blackout earlier might have been no accident after all. Oh, excellent. We got a timer. Salmon room. Oh, I guess there's not much to examine, just the breaker box. Cool. Right then. So we still have the smoking room. We were in the king bedroom, so let's go to the smoking room. And who do we have here? Probably what's her face. I returned to what the prince had called the proverbial smoke filled room. <laughs> it struck me that this would be the perfect place to call everyone and reveal the truth to this mystery. All mm. in good time. In the meantime, I thought it wise to take another look around while I still had the room to myself. <laughs> I know who the killer is! It's the small child! Okay, okay, so nobody's in here. It's good to know. On one side of the room, there was a wine rack filled with dusty old bottles. Most were empty. But a few still contain small amounts of what must have been very well aged wine. At least, I hoped it was just one. With a family like these, one could never be much. <laughs> Perhaps I should take a bottle with me to check it later. Just in case. Just for, you know, to chill and calm my nerves. What happened? Oh. 
The large crystal globe in the cabinet was impossible to miss. It seemed to be filled with a swirling red mist of some kind. Hmm. And as I stared into it, I thought for a moment that I could see a pair of malevolent eyes. Or was it just one staring back? Hmm. Oh, but surely it must have just been my reflection in combination with the dim light. Oh, you're being watched. The door. Another chandelier. Statue. The strange pose of the statue in the corner of the room rather reminded me of my third cousin. <laughs> you see, the last time I saw the dear old boy, he was in the process of losing his balance and tumbling down the woods. <laughs> Terrible tragedy, really. They had to have those stairs completely replaced just to get the cut out. Oh, wow. <laughs> That cabinet had a few things of interest in it, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Let's take a closer look. Look at that. In the cabinet, there was an odd little doll that seemed to be made out of straw. Was it some kind of voodoo doll? I tried making those a time or two myself, although, to my great dismay, they never seemed to actually work quite right. <laughs> Cushion. The padded velvet cushion sat in the cabinet looking somewhat forlorn. Surely it was meant to showcase something more interesting. But there was nothing on it now. Mm -hmm. I could swear that something had been on this cushion before. I think it was the knife. Just what was it? Knife. Yes, that was it. There had been a knife on the cushion during the tour. I was sure of it. And not just any. The knife that may have stabbed the prince. But who could have taken it? I cast my mind back, trying to remember if anyone had lingered behind for even a moment. But it availed me nothing. The prince had been the first to leave the room, but that was the only thing of which I was certain. Mm. That room is finito. Let's go to King bedroom. There might not be anybody in there. Though we haven't seen what's her face, the purple lady or the green lady, Leah. Oh, there she is. I returned to the King bedroom where I'd been when the whole grizzly affair started. I thought it might give me a chance to think by myself. Alas, it was not to be. Mm -hmm. The curtains were drawn back, and a particularly pernicious twerp of a girl was leaning halfway out the window. Mm. After what had already happened, it would be such a shame were she to slip and go out all the way. <laughs> Young girls these days really ought to be more careful. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What are you doing? My dear little girl, just what are you doing? You're liable to go for quite the little tumble if you keep leaning out the window like that. I'm trying to get a decent suit. Oh, for your phone? Yes. It does seem like you young people just can't get by without them these days. I don't care about the phone or network access. Whatever for. So I can hack the phone company records and figure out who called this house. Mm. You can do that, can you? Yep. <laughs> Can't you go find a fainting couch and a bottle of smelling salts or something? Let's see. J 
just who are you? Now, Miss Leah, was it? I'm afraid I just don't know very much about you. Who are you exactly? I'm Sherry's friend. I rather gathered that much. But, my dear girl, what with her enormous fortune, social connections, and not even my innocent good looks, I'd imagine the list of people who'd like to be friends with Miss Cherise is rather long. What's special about you? Fine. My parents were rich too. They're in the tech business. Sherry and I went to private school together. I helped her with math. She helped me be a better person. That's right now. You say were. Have your parents passed away as well? No, we just don't get along too well right now. Ah, and your dear old fabulously wealthy school friend took you in. How sweet of her. Uh -huh. I see where you're going with this. And no, I'm not financially dependent on Sharice. Sure, I live with her, but I've got a nice little fund of my own. So I've got no motive to bump off a boyfriend out of fear that he'll kick me out of the house or something. Oh my, perish the thought. I never dream of suggesting such a thing. No, I'm sure you've got much nastier things to save for your dreams. So your friend, Miss Cherise, just how long has she been seen at our dear departed house? Not that long, but he seems pretty intense about it. Nighttime river cruises, the opera, the theater, name it. Ah, swept off her feet into a whirlwind romance with a dark and mysterious dashing older man. Your friend must have been positively giddy with excitement. Something like that, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> oh, it must have been so hard for you. Being left out of all that and decided to watch him from the sidelines. Yeah, right. That kind of high society stuff isn't really my thing. No. No, I suppose not. Come to think of it, Wizard Boy sometimes looked a little pouty at being left out there. Did he really? How do you know? Did he tell you so? No, nothing like that. Just an impression I got. Hmm. Not really my business anyway. As long as Sherry's happy, I'm happy. It's all that matters. I see. So, was she happy? It was... It was what she wanted. So, yeah. Was it what she wanted? You try them. You just can't bring yourself to sound happy about that. My, my. How curious. Look, if you're gonna fly any further, you better go get yourself a crow don't you think? <laughs> Alright, Leah, you don't grate on my nerves as much. Hmm. So, your sweet little friend. She can be quite the tease, it seems. I was just talking to her earlier. And she let it drop that this wasn't her first murder case. Hmm. You must think you're very clever for blowing that up. You know, I bet you're one of those people who think they're a lot smarter than they really are, aren't you? My dear Leah, something like that is not exactly the wisest thing to say when you're perched precariously on the edge of a window. <laughs> it's ever so fortunate that I'm in a good mood today. A good mood? Here? Now? How could... No, never mind. I forgot who I was talking to. In any case, my dear, Miss Teresa, the only other one here who was involved in that case, was you. No matter how smart I might or might not be, Surely you can't blame me for wondering whether it might be relevant to our current predicament. But it's not. Not directly, anyway. Aha. Uh -huh. Not directly. 
Now we're getting somewhere. Look, I didn't want to talk about it. And I'm sure Sherry said the same thing. But it was bad. For everyone, especially for her. The truth she learned that day, she's never going to forget. And she definitely doesn't need you dredging it all up. Uh. Let me guess. All light and snare on the outside, but on that dark day, of course she would have learned just what she was capable of. And just what was that exactly? <laughs> Murder, of course. Hmm. <laughs> oh, looks like I was right about you after all. I know, what a shock. You can't fool me, my dear. I can see it in those glassy, haunted eyes. Haunted by the realization that in her lurks the same devilish voice that whispers to all of us, tempting us to do terrible things. I'm right, aren't I? Um, no. Aren't you listening? I said I was right. About you. Not being too bright. <laughs> And here I could swear we already had this little talk about imprudent comments like that. Oh, you're shooting in the dark and you both know. Besides, Sherry would never kill him. Ever. And so he deserved. Mm. But you would. <laughs> Take for sure luck. Oh, darling. Believe me, I'll be fine. If there's one thing I do know about, it's luck. Hmm. So, your sweet little friend. She can be quite the tease, it seems. I was just talking to her earlier, and she got in trouble. Hmm. My. The good news. Well, it's not. Ah. Uh. Look. Her family she is meant to tell me, darling. She learned the truth about her family, didn't she? That not all that lovely money of theirs was obtained through how shall I say? Completely honest business. <clears throat> mm. It's plain as day, really. Insufferably idealistic young socialite comes into her fortune and starts throwing it at every charitable cause she can find out of guilt. Oh yes, I know her type well enough. We learned that a family had been mixed up with some really bad people. They were just bad. The true evil. And so it turns out her life of wealth and comfort was built on the blood of innocence. So very tragic for her, I'm sure. She just wants to make up for me. Make it all right again. Sometimes I wonder if she thinks she can carry the weight of the whole world. She pushes herself hard enough. Yes, I did say insufferably idealistic, didn't I? If by that you mean a better person than you'll ever be, then yeah, it's spot on. She just needs someone to watch her back. That's all. And let me guess. You do whatever it takes to keep your dear little friend safe. Wouldn't you? Whatever it takes. <laughs> my, my. Such ardor. Such resolve. Remind me never to get on your bad side, darling. Too late. <laughs> So, who was it then that called the house? If I tell you, would it get you to leave me alone? My dear girl, this predicament affects all of us. If you found out anything that might be the least helpful, surely it's in all of our interest for you to share it. I'll take that as a yes. Fine. Number is 1122334. Mm -hmm. It's a business number registered to Oxley Accounting Services. Nice. An accountant? 
It doesn't exactly sound like a social call. No, it doesn't. Who knows? Well, as I could tell, this prince by Tango had some pretty weird friends. You haven't tried contacting them, then? No, I've been talking to more weirdos. <laughs> I'd rather try and hack into their private email or something and see what's up. I'll leave you to it, my dear. Alright, so let's go back and examine the room one more time. So we got the chandelier. Did this book Have these books on the shelf belong to the Lee family as well? Curious, I skimmed a few of the titles. A History of the Republic. Genealogy of the Great Families. Mm. How to Train Killer Bats. Genghis Khan and the 21 Balloons. All dreadfully dull classics, I'm sure. <laughs> it's a portrait. It's a door. It's a mirror. Or a chair. For just the slightest of moments, I considered collapsing into the antique red chair in the room's corner. After all, we'd spend the evening on our feet, traipsing about the house for the prince's little ghost tour. Then I remembered that spider webs don't just come out of nowhere, <laughs> and that upholstery is a prime place for the little nasties to hide. I would have to remember to warn our dull eyed little angel about that as well. You know, in addition to the possible bloodstains and all. I simply adore old chandelier. Modern life could. Just what kind of skill I must be fed. Okay, and then the bed. So that was all that was changed. Alright, let's leave the room. Where shall we go now? I guess the only other place is the queen bedroom, which uh what's her face should be in. Because we haven't seen her. There in she the is. Queen bedroom. I found my old social acquaintance, the Contessa. To say that I trusted her was coming much too far. But I had certainly known her longer than anyone else there had known. Besides that, I knew her to have an ear for gossip and an eye for detail. If there was anyone who could tell me a little more about the past of our little drama, it was her. <laughs> There you are, Miss Fortune, darling. I must say, this whole affair is just dreadful, isn't it? Tragic. Truly tragic. Prince Titanico was an eccentric man, but he knew how to put on a show. Sadly, this is rather more than I expected, I'm afraid. Are we really sure he didn't plan the whole thing after all? You know, have the last laugh, go out with a bang, that sort of thing. Oh no, my dear, I don't think so. The prince, by all accounts, was far too fond of himself for that. Hmm. Hmm, pity. It would have made for such a delicious story. Not to mention no longer having to worry about a possible killer being on the loose. <laughs> Quite so. Uh, talk to Contessa. Darling, I have a little confession to make. Although I've met our good host, um, well, ex-host, a number of times, I'm afraid I never really knew him, if you understand what I mean. I hardly expect you're the only one in that situation, my dear. The prince had this maddening habit of talking all the time and yet somehow still saying very little. So was he really a prince then? Do you know? These days, title really does not mean what it once did. After all, how many do you have now? Hmm. Oh, let me see. At least three. All by marriage, of course. Sometimes it can be hard to keep track. 
just so. No doubt our late prince will make some claim or another. These days, who can't? Just about anyone can claim a tenuous connection to some great old family that was thought lost in the revolution. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to prove them wrong. And as long as there isn't money involved, no one much cared to try. So he called himself a prince, and that's about all anyone knew. He wasn't married or anything, was he? Good heavens, I hope not. You did see him doting all over our sweet little Charisse, didn't you? Come now, Comtessa. You and I both know that's proven nothing. <laughs> so cruel. That's so true. Still, if he was ever married, I never heard of it. And you do have such a knack for hearing interesting things, darling. If there was anything to hear, I dare say you would have heard it. Oh, modesty for this. In any case, it would seem our late prince was quite the enigma then. At least I can feel glad that I wasn't the only one. know about you, but I can't shake the impression that Miss Therese was, for lack of a better term, the guest of honor this evening. What do you know about her? Oh, the poor girl. She's an only child, and her parents passed away just recently. Yes, I feel for her. An enormous inheritance, and all of a sudden, no one around to tell her how to spend it. The family. They were industrialists, were they not? That's right, though by the end they were into pretty much everything. Manufacturing, banking, real estate, and more. They were a bit close knit about their north world, and certainly one of the richest private families in the Empire. And if I recall correctly, they were a new money family, too. Money growing upstarts. I think I heard them call it court from time to time. Did you really? I don't doubt it, of course. <sighs> that place can be just so beastly sometimes. Actually, I thought that was rather tame. <laughs> you should hear the things they call me. Oh yes, they can say such horrid things about widows like us. Sometimes you and I will have to swap stories of the more creative ones. Well, these circumstances are more pleasant, of course. Of course. You know, it was really quite shocking. One minute the prince was playing host and telling ghost stories. And next thing you know, we all come running and he's dead on the floor. Oh, indeed. That was a surprise of a most unpleasant nature. Where were you when you heard the news? It was that one-eyed shambler in the ill-fitting coat who found me in the other bedroom. Did he find you first? No. In fact, I was in here. And it was that young man with a decidedly orangish hue who brought him the news. Hmm. Our oh so helpful Horatio. He must have been done fixing the lights then. Yes, they'd only just come on. I must say, he was in quite a state, with those robes of his flapping about everywhere. I expect I would have loved if he didn't look so distressed. Oh, alas, such a waste of opportunity. Uh, mind you, he didn't tell me exactly what the matter was at first. I'm not sure he knew himself. He only said that something had happened, and we had to gather everyone together right away. And our two little darlings, you found them on the way back then? Precisely, just as we were coming back down to the main floor. Well, it's good we've got that all straightened up. 
With so much running about the house, it's enough to make one's head spin trying to sort it all out. Oh my word, yes! I used to get quite bad headaches myself, especially back when I was with my second husband. Mind you, those only ever seem to come on when he was telling vulgar stories. <laughs> My dear, I know exactly what you mean. Okay, Leia's finally. Tessa, darling, I just heard a delectable little morsel of gossip and simply must share it with someone. Why, some scrumptious gossip is just what I need right now. Do tell me more, dear. I was talking to the Leah girl, you know, Charisse's little penguin, and she hinted that she'd been feuding with her family and was more or less kept out of the house. Oh my, how sad for the whole damn thing. <laughs> to be honest, if she lived with me, I'm quite sure I'd do the same. But do you know anything about who she is? I dare say I know a little. Her parents are wealthy moguls in the technology sector. That is, until about a year ago. Oh, of course they were. No wonder I didn't know who she was. I find all that techno battle so terrible, doll. So, what happened? Someone made the company's most sensitive Records that suggested corporate espionage and other unsavory business. Thanks to a rather exorbitantly priced lawyer, who couldn't handle a more than a prison sentence, the company was ruined. I see. Do you think then that our very own Miss Leah was the one to leak the files? Oh, darling, it's unseemly to speculate about <laughs> such things. Mm. Well, hmm. A self righteous brat who will send her own family up the river if that's what it takes to do what she thinks is right. <laughs> and here I thought I couldn't like her any less than I already did. And so, how did you know Prince Titanico then? I met him at an art auction. How about you? Oh, I hardly knew him at all, really. He was an acquaintance of my late husband's. We played cards together sometimes at his club, so I understand. I see. Is this the first time you've seen him, then, since your husband passed away? Well, he came to the funeral, but other than that, yes. Yes, it is. Don't you think it's a little odd that he would invite you out to a rather small event like this, when your husband was the one he actually knew? Mm, he said he thought I would appreciate the historical nature of the estate, and he's not wrong on that count. Perhaps he may have also thought I'd be a little lonely, being recently widowed and all. A woman in my position gets rather used to it. But it's sweet of the other one to try. Yes, <laughs> indeed. One does get used to it. Husbands come and go. It's the way of the world, really. Too true. Okay. Talk to you about everything. There's another chandelier, a bed, a chair, a mirror, a side On table. On a small table in the center of the room sat a little book. The kind one could write in. Could it be a diary? And by reading it, might I steal a big glance into the inner life of some member of the once mighty big family? Are we gonna grab a book? But to my great disappointment, I found the pages empty. Ah. Oh, well. I suppose that hoping to discover the defiant last words of the infamous Larican Lee written in blood really would have been a bit much to ask for. 
<laughs> I couldn't make out the lady in the ruined portrait, but I assumed it must be some grand old dame of the Lee household. Why had she been left behind? Have the rest of the family simply not liked her? <laughs> Mind you, if I ever had to sell one of my estates, I would fancy leaving behind as many self-portraits as I could spare. You know, just so that the new owners would feel like I was keeping an eye on them. <laughs> Another chest that has no bearing on anything. Vases, and nobody cares about this, so... A set of old vases sat on the dresser. Could there possibly still be anything in them? The neck of the nearest vase was too narrow for me to see anything inside of the lens. I suppose I could have stuck my hand in to figure it out. But... Hmm, there could easily be a mouse or a spider lurking in there. No, no. That would be a much more suitable job for Miss Cherise in those small, dainty hands of hers, I think. <laughs> Alright, there is absolutely nothing in this room. Sweet. Alright, let's get moving with our lives. Thank you for joining me as I played MMM Murder Most Misfortunate by Foolish Mortals. The next episode will be out shortly. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, a follow, and ring that notification bell so you know when the new episode drops. Also, don't forget to check out the link to the completely free Discord server to chat about games and whatever else is on your mind. Let's keep the comments chill, so no hate or spoilers as I'm not above removing those comments and the people who make them. That's all for now, folks, and I'll see you next time.